Hi, my name is Brianna Newman, and I am this year's head captain. I'm Ethan Rader Hum. I am one of the co fabrication heads. Um, I'm Alec, I am the uh, co fabrication head. I'm Hayden Casworth, and I am the student advisor. My name is Ruth Potter, and I am the secretary. My name is Samantha Heiberg, and I am the public relations representative. Uh, my name is Aaron Eastlake. Gabriel Bukunik. Antonio Candelaria. I'm Nick Radliff. So, here's Steel Wool. <laughs> The first step to making really any bridge is to come up with a design for the bridge. Our captain, Brianna Newman, did a lot of the design of the bridge as well as getting all of our other members involved. We designed the bridge using Bentley's STAD program, and in that you can basically model the bridge out of a bunch of beams and nodes. I would have to model it first, because I don't know if you guys knew, I modeled the legs and now we passed that test. Every year we start with a general design meeting. I go to our team, I show them what the rules look like, and we kind of just brainstorm ideas. And then from there I start putting things into STAD. The STAD process is usually pretty iterative with changing the properties of the beams that you build out of different thicknesses and shapes of materials. This year we went with a square bridge um, using square tubing. I wanted to make it easier to fabricate um, rather than using round tubes which we've used in the past. We use 4130 chromoly steel which is a very high strength, low weight type of steel. For the use of our bridge, it works extremely well. When looking at the rules for this year's competition, there were two things that we took into consideration initially when designing the bridge. The first was that due to it being an animal crossing bridge, you couldn't have anything above the deck of the bridge, so we had to go with a substructure as opposed to a superstructure. And the second thing we took into consideration was the fact that the bridge has a cantilever on one side. I know that cantilevers are like really hard to design. Uh, it was definitely interesting to build too. Did everybody else know that? That the cantilever is just going to be the deck but upside down? So the... I didn't. That's kind of cool though. <laughs> because um, when you have a cantilever, the uh, tension is on the top and the compression is on the bottom. Yeah. So the way we have the deck design is it's good in compression on the top, good in tension on the bottom. So the cantilever just flips. Our bridge design is with a deck along with a substructure and then connecting the two sides are lats and kickers. The lats, we have five vertical lats. The vertical lats are there to stop side-to-side -side motion between the north and south sides of the deck. They're, they're placed strategically to kind of help minimize the sway points around where the lat tests occur. The kickers on this year's bridge have multiple benefits. On the cantilever, it provides extra support that the deck is enabled to provide. And then the kickers on the span provide lateral support, that the bridge without them is really wavy and doesn't like to stand on its own. The big difference that we see in this bridge versus our previous ones is our connection type. Usually we do a pretty good job of reading through things, but sometimes they throw new things at us um, that we don't notice until later. And one of those things this year is a rule about fanning surfaces, which a fanning surface is anywhere that one member touches another member. And the rule is that any fang surface must be penetrated by a bolt. With all of that, that makes both dovetail connections and T connections invalid, and we can't use them on the bridge. So, therefore, uh, we are going to have this little time to be a meeting um, to figure out what we're gonna do. Our connection type that we use for pretty much the whole bridge is what we call the trailer hitch. So basically on one tube, you've got it like this with a hole running through it. And then on the other tube, you've got like a hitch type of thing that goes around it and a bolt goes through all of them. They have a little gap in between in order to not create a third fanning surface as that's not allowed, but it really made the bridge almost easier to fabricate because it wasn't anything complicated. It's something everybody could get their mind around. And so what we do is we uh, take the design bridge out of model space and kind of just lay it out on a table and we weld it all together. Our bridge comes to us in literally just square tubing. We're seeing people cutting the tubing, welding the tubing, um, angle grinding and sanding various things. We really like to include everybody in our fabrication process. Whether you have had like 10 years of welding experience or you've never touched a tool in your life and you have no idea how to work with steel. What's load test? Load test, all right. We're gonna get started with our load test. At load test, we uh, 
have the bridge all put together, we have it ready to go, and we run a load test similar to how you would see it in competition, and we keep track of where the deflection is at every 100 pounds that we add. So right now what we are doing on the bridge is we are setting up um, our deflection measurements, we're just doing that with a ruler. We pull at the designated spots for the lateral test to make sure that there's not more than the allowable deflection in the bridge, and then we load up our bridge um, with 2,500 pounds, exactly how they would at competition. We had a total aggregate deflection of one and a quarter inches. Once we've done our load test and everything passes, we move on to our build practices. This year, our build team is composed of five builders, myself included. We have two people building the shorter side of the bridge and three people building the side of the bridge with the cantilever. Oh, this bridge is the best bridge because it's com nothing like we've really ever had before. I really feel like it's not just my bridge, it's our bridge. And... Yeah,